Welcome to Contact, and thank you for joining us today. We've got a brand new series called A New Commandment. Now, today's title is called New Ways. Now, many people, even those without a church background, are familiar with the Ten Commandments or have at least heard of some of the commandments once they are repeated. Well, when Jesus came, he gave us a new commandment that we should live by. So a little bit about this new commandment we're going to be talking yeah, about. Yeah, well, it was so shocking to the people of his day that Jesus had to keep saying it. So the new commandment is love God and love people. Love your neighbor love as your neighbor, yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's, yeah. and, and in fact, all he really did was take a previous commandment and said, this is now the commandment of the new covenant. Yeah, it's so much easier because really, as we'll find out as we get into this series, when uh, you love God and you love one another, you pretty much obey all the rest of the commandments are all fulfilled in that one. Yeah. So we're going to hear all about that today. Hope you'll stick with us and we'll be right back. Providing advanced academic learning, Faith Landmarks Academy is an exciting educational opportunity for members of FLM. With classes available for students from K-5 to the 12th grade, our academy is an affordable Christian school alternative to secular education. We provide quality, trusted, biblical curriculum that challenges each student to excel. Open enrollment is ongoing now. Applications are available online at faithlandmarks.org FLA or you can pick up an application at one of our information tables on site. For more information or to schedule a tour, contact the school office at 804-262-8256. Glory to God. Okay, uh, Gospel of John chapter eight. Hallelujah. Uh, First verse, it says, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. Okay, now I'm going to stop right there for just a moment. And, you know, Jesus is an amazing person. You know, in chapter 7, he uh, overcame the obstacle of his own family trying to trip him up. Praise the Lord. And, you know, and just watch the things that he overcomes. And then he went to the feast in Jerusalem and, you know, there were enemies waiting on him when he got there. Now, you know, frankly, uh, if, if, a person, if a believer doesn't know how to walk in the love of God, that would shut the average person down. They would just say, well, I'm never going to do that again. I'm never going back there again. I'm, I never want to have anything to do with that. Hallelujah. But here, here's Jesus not only finishing chapter 7, but then, you know, chapter 8, uh, he, he uh, is going to continue on with the feast and ministering to and blessing people. Okay, so he, he went to the Mount of Olives, which is right across from the temple uh, proper. Uh, verse 2, it says, early in the morning... Uh, he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him. He sat down and taught them. Hallelujah. Now, you know, lurking in the bushes, so to speak, 
were the scribes and Pharisees. And, you know, Jesus just made himself available to people. He was totally vulnerable. You know, he, he sat down in the big temple proper area. Crowd of people came to him and he started teaching people. Okay, so just, just trying to give you a sense of what it was like to be there. Okay, and, and the simple fact that Jesus was making himself available and vulnerable for everyone. Hallelujah. But in the middle of all this, he's going to show us a new way to deal with trouble. Okay, so we just have the, the stick here just to illustrate uh, this. This is just a little help. For somebody that's on the way, somebody this morning told me that they never go walking in the woods without a stick like that. Hallelujah. Well, you know, it, it's good to keep your balance, but it's also good to uh, deal with whatever might be coming down the trail. <laughs> well, we, we have a bear that lives across the street from our house. He shows up every now and then, but, you know, hallelujah. He, he's just a little bear. Praise the Lord. All right. So uh, verse 3, is, and the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him. Now this is crack of dawn in the morning, first thing. Uh, you know, and, and Jesus just went over there in the morning. Okay, sat down with a crowd of people. And it doesn't say how many people, but most likely because it was a feast, the temple area was packed with people. Now, these people had all kinds of issues, just like everybody does. They brought all their issues with them to the feast. The feast was designed by God to be a place for people to unload their burdens, get their sins off their back, and go back to their lives. That's what the, the feasts were all about. So every person there probably had a problem. You know, they brought it with them. Lord God, are you there? Okay, kind of like today's world. You know, we, we all live in, in a, a full and open world. And, and, you know, you can't even go to the grocery store without running into uh, reality. Hallelujah. Yeah, so uh, let Jesus show you a new way to deal with things. You know, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're probably praying also for all the people that you love and support, and you're, you're, you're covering them with your faith and your prayers, okay, which, which can be, that's probably what you're doing at the grocery store. <laughs> you, you got your list, most likely on your phone, but what you're really doing is you're praying for all the people that are on your heart. Hallelujah, and, and uh, th that's a spirit-filled believer in today's world. Well, you're not the only one that experiences that. In fact, you can't go anywhere without taking your needs with you. All right, so the very similar thing, um, and the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. Now, th this was probably a very typical thing. Uh, at the temple. Remember the reason why they were there was to deal with sin. Hallelujah. Sin, uh, you're living a blissful life, largely in part because sin has already been defeated for you. But you can't forget the rest of the world is not like that. They carry it with them everywhere they go. They're constantly dealing with it. Their, their conscience is, is uh, twisted, actually, from having to, you know, because they have to face themselves. They walk by a puddle and see their reflection and, and they think about the, themselves, probably like you used to. But now, you know, what you, what you and I do is we start out the day looking at our image in the mirror, remembering who we are in Christ Jesus just like the song that we were just singing about being a new creature. You're a new creature because of what Jesus did for you at Calvary. Okay, and, and, and again, not to forget, you got it made, but not everybody is like that. 
Okay, so uh, the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees, what they were to, trying to do was stage a scene so that Jesus would have to do something very distasteful in front of all these people, that they would get to watch him do this. So the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And for the record, uh, Jesus technically was not a priest. Okay, so dealing with sin on this regard, on this level, was actually the job of the, of the scribes and the Pharisees. So they're kind of like, you know, uh, Jesus, th this is the thing that we have to deal with. Hallelujah. So uh, uh, here's what they, they did. Uh, they set her in the midst and they said unto him, Master, this woman is taken in adultery in the very act. So, you know, it's like an admission on their part. We're going to have to deal with this. But we just thought that we would, seeing as how you're, you're uh, you know, you got the ear of all the people here. Uh, you, you can hear their mockery. Okay. And, uh, but Jesus, what would you do in this situation? Verse 5, it says, Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? Now remember, when you, 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 this is a Bible reading church. So you, you remember way back when the Ten Commandments were, were first issued. Okay? And Moses had, had the privilege of standing up before God and before all the people to let them know what, what was the law involved. Now, the law, it's not intended to be friendly. But the day the law was, uh, you know, accepted by the people, it was almost like they signed off on it. Uh, the Ten Commandments, that's there in the book of Exodus. You can see it for yourself. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but uh, what, what, you know, then it's almost like the next day they woke up and, and they, they brought this guy. Uh, they said, well, this guy was gathering sticks. Remember that? So what's the next step? Well, stone him. He's violating the uh, Sabbath. Hallelujah. And then there were other ones like that that followed. I know it's, it's, it's like, wow, really? Yeah. But th this is what the scribes and Pharisees were dealing with. And so Jesus is going to show them a new way. All right, so uh, just kind of elaborating here on the scene so that you, you can get, get yourself there and understand and sense the whole thing. Uh, Moses said that uh, such should be stoned. What do you say? Uh, this, they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. And remember, they wanted to uh, reduce Jesus' image before the people. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground. So in other words, he didn't buy into their campaign. He, he stooped down, wrote, uh, drew a little thing on the, on the ground with his finger as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted himself up and said unto, unto them, uh, he that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. Okay, so, so what, you know, what, what he did was he, it was really their responsibility. He just kind of put it back in, into their keeping. <clears throat> then he said, he that is without sin among you, let him uh, cast the first stone. Hallelujah. He stooped down again, wrote on the ground. And when they heard it, being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone. And the woman standing in the midst, uh, when Jesus had lifted up her, himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? No man uh, has condemned you. Now remember, it was a death sentence. Wow, there's plenty of that going around in today's world that you live in. You know, if you follow those things, you know, it happens continuously. 
Verse 11, she said, she's answering back to Jesus, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Now remember the, the, the ones in, in which it was their job to do this. And, you know, they, they weren't able to handle what Jesus said about, about you know, if, if you are without sin, then you cast the first stone. And that's technically not the way the law worked. Okay? But, but they, their consciences were so smitten and, and they were so weak personally that, that they, couldn't, they didn't even have an answer for him. So, and, and so they all left. They just left the woman there, which tells me this is kind of the way they were used to dealing with these things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, well, I got another one of these for you, if you would, please. Um, over to John, Gospel of John, chapter 14. Now, remember, the woman was caught in adultery. Uh, the law of Moses said that uh, that is a death sentence. Jesus himself, not being a priest, but being the Son of God, he released the woman, and told her to go her way, just don't sin anymore. Now, where is she going to get the power to keep from sinning? Well, she, she might not have known it then, but the only place the power resided that could have delivered her from that was in the person who delivered her. Now, this kind of, uh, in a way, it sort of reads our mail too. Because, you know, what happens is you end up dealing with scenarios that are not of your making. You know, all Jesus was doing was teaching the people. You know, but, but he had enemies because he was teaching the people and they tried to take their job and make him responsible for it, right? Hallelujah. And so that, that probably is happening to you. Might even be as we speak that you're you're dealing with one of these situations. Uh, just a little bit of a reality check in the world that we live in today. You know, there, there's there's a lot of big problems, but then there's a lot of uh, individual problems like drug and alcohol abuse. Now that becomes very complicated the further it goes. But usually, remember what the world says is there's no answer for that. A, a person who is, who is born with a, a predisposition towards chemical substance and abuse is saddled with it, according to the world, for the rest of their lives because there's no cure for it. And usually what happens, it got quiet in here all of a sudden. Usually what happens is the disease, you know, it, it is a disease, okay? But we know that Jesus is able to deliver people from the disease. In fact, strong possibility that many of you were actually delivered. Go ahead and shout the victory and thank God for his grace. Okay, well, you're walking free from it because of what he did. Okay. But what happens in, in, uh, in that environment is usually the person that has the disease uh, has a family. And, and so what happens is it's like a downward spiral from catastrophe to ca catastrophe. And people that uh, live in a family like that who maintain contact with the family, most of the time people bail and run. Just, just like in Jesus' day, the scribes and Pharisees, you know, they had a job to do, but they bailed and ran. They tried to get him to do it. Woo, hallelujah. Go ahead and say amen. Hallelujah. Now, and remember, Jesus is all God and all man. Okay, but he still had to deal with these things. Okay, and so then there's chapter 9, 
with the man on the, on the side of the road that was blind from birth. And Jesus said, well, I've been sent to take care of the works of him that sent me. And the, he, he that sent me uh, gave me the power to release this man from his blindness. You know, they said themselves in the account, it had never been recorded in the history of man that any person born blind would be healed from it. But Jesus got down on, <laughs> on the ground, made a little clay out of his own spittle and the dust of the ground and rubbed it in his eyes. Re remember that, and told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. And uh, you know, it was quite a distance down to that pool. Ceremonial washing is what they called it. Okay, and the man came back seeing. Now, <laughs> that was not the end of the trouble. You know, because then, then the, <laughs> the, the ones that felt bad got bad. <laughs> you know, they felt bad because uh, here was this guy that got delivered, that they all knew him. You know, he grew up right in their midst. Welcome back. Really glad that you've joined us on this series that we're beginning today. And it's, it's a new commandment and we're talking about new ways. Now, you know, what, what happened with Jesus, he was actually sidelined by the scribes and Pharisees because they were so used to condemning people, they didn't know how to live without the condemnation. Yeah, and they were supposed to be representing God. Yeah. So that's the real shocker is that um, the scribes and Pharisees and the priests were supposed to be representatives of God to the people right. and demonstrate God's thoughts and feelings about whatever happened. And so it wasn't a pretty picture. Picture right. at all, you know, but then here comes Jesus who was healing people on, on the Sabbath, which really made people angry, right. the priests and scribes, because they never healed anybody, but they yeah. certainly, yeah. you know, they were, believed in works and they thought you had to work for everything. Mm -hmm. So Jesus just healed multitudes of people without them doing anything other than just coming. And they were hoping to trap Jesus, you know, in some word or deed that he did to disqualify him in the eyes of the people. But, you know, we know that Jesus walked perfectly. Yeah. He never sinned. And he was a, an example. He came to show us the Father. He walked in love. He walked in love. And so even when people were brought to him who were caught in actual sin that would have required them to be killed according to the law, yeah. the law of Moses, Jesus let them loose. Yeah. And that made everybody <laughs> mad. Yeah. Because Jesus said, I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to give you life and life more abundantly. There we Praise go. Praise the Lord. So if you haven't come in contact with Jesus in that way, we just want to invite you to come visit us here at Faith Landmark so you can find out all about the love of God and how much he loves you. Yeah. And uh, we also want to just let you know that we're in the beginning of summer and we're getting ready for our summer outreach programs here in Richmond and in the surrounding areas, including our youth missions trip to Myrtle Beach. We invite you to visit our website, contact.tv, and learn all that contact and our home church, Faith Landmarks Ministries, what we're doing to spread the gospel. Also here at Faith Landmarks, we're getting ready for our upcoming school year. Now, I know it's still early in the summer, but school will be back before you know it. So don't miss your spot at Faith Landmarks Academy. It's our fully accredited K-5 through 12th grade school and we're currently in enrollment. We also have a wonderful daycare that loves and cares for children from six weeks through K-4. We have a skill center that teaches everything from music and art classes to how to change the oil in your car or paint a wall in your house. So if you'd like more information about the educational opportunities that we provide here at FLM, please visit our website, faithlandmarks.org, and click on the school tab at the top of the page. You can also become a partner with us in spreading the good news of Jesus Christ around the world. Now, that, that's something that will completely change a person's life. So you can be become a partner. Uh, contact is good ground, and we believe that every seed that you sow will be multiplied and returned back to you in abundance. 
You can give and partner with us simply by going to our website, contact.tv. So here's a few things coming up before the end of the summer that we'd like to tell you about. Hey FLM, it's your weather girl Snowbell. Right now I'm on site at Longdale Elementary School and uh, it's a little stormy but we're hoping for clear skies this July 22nd through the 26th because we're going to beautify this school and we need your help. If you're available from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. that week, your diligence to rebuild America can sow a seed into the lives of these children. And if anyone is available to um, beautify me, I was just... glad that you've joined us to get today on contact. We want to invite you to come back next week for our second part of this series, The New Commandment. Now, uh, we also want to invite you to come to the physical plant, uh, this church building, and become a part of what's going on here. You can do that simply by attending. But in the event that you're too far away, you can also continue to stream uh, everything that we do here uh, at the church, and uh, it's all shown on faithlandmarks.org. So we love you and appreciate you. We look forward to seeing you back again on Contact. Be blessed and have a good day. <music>